Hi, my name is Shauna Brown, and I am the host of Talk with Shauna. I'm a singer, songwriter, recording artist, currently living in Brampton, Ontario, originally from Wolfville, Nova Scotia. The theme song to my show is actually my original song called Turn Up the Microphone. You can find it on YouTube. If you could all subscribe to my channel, Shauna Brown on YouTube, that would be awesome. Thanks everybody for watching, and here's the show. Hello everyone, you are now watching Talk with Shauna right here on the Fired Up Network, Female Empowerment Movement. I'm extremely excited to finally meet in person and also have on the show a very special guest. His name is Jamal Kamaldine, and thank you so much for being on the show. How are you, Jamal? I'm well, thanks for having me. How are you? Awesome. I'm doing very well as well. Um, yes, so I'm excited to share with our viewers your story. What's, um, what brought you here? Where are you originally from? And where are you currently located and living now? So I was born and raised in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Um, I'm originally from Lebanon. And um, our great, my great uncle came in 1905 to Saskatchewan. So we've been here quite a long time. Wow, 1905. That's amazing. Yeah. That wow. Um, so I guess for the viewers, if they don't know yet, I know it's a very popular business, but um, where was the very first Burger Baron? Uh, where was it located and who created the very first Burger Baron? So it's a bit of a story, uh, hence the, the documentary and then the movie. Mm -hmm. um, but the original uh, idea was from two Irish uh, American brothers out of Great Falls, Montana. Uh, and Burger Baron started under the label of uh, Burger Master. Um, a guy named Jack McDonald, uh, just like that movie, Coming to America, ironically, <laughs> same kind of last name, but he invented the concept and the name Burger Baron, uh, brought it to Canada in 1955 to more specifically Lethbridge and then Calgary uh, were the first two locations. Um, we came into the picture a little after that. Um, similar to the McDonald's story where uh, Jack McDonald expanded too quickly. Uh, there was a big potential there. Uh, and after about six locations, seven locations, they went uh, bankrupt. And then uh, my father, Rudy, uh, quote unquote, the godfather, uh, took over uh, and expanded uh, quite a bit. Yeah, you've mentioned the godfather. And so now now I have a little bit of an idea of what you're talking about when you say that, which is very cool. Um, and I love that, by the way. That is such, such a cool thing. Thank you. Um, yeah. So, okay. So if you could describe to someone what the Burger Baron is, like someone that's never been there, have never been to one before, um, right. what would you tell them. Well, how would you describe it to someone? It's kind of a, uh, I would say it's a original franchise um, that has a cult following, no pun intended. Um, very original, very, uh, you know, it, it's odd. Like the, there's no two locations that are exactly the same for taste. Uh, so not many people have their favorite McDonald's, for example. But at the same time, uh, I've heard it quite a bit where people say they have their favorite burger brand location. Um, but it's, it's quite uh, an experience. Yeah, so I, so it seems like wherever you go, you you get sort of your own experience, your own taste kind of thing. And that yeah. actually sounds pretty interesting because I know a lot of times when people go out and they get go to a restaurant and have a meal, they don't always want to go to the same place because they want to have a different experience. But if you think about it, you go to a different location, then you're getting a different experience. So that's it's like built really in, cool. yeah. Yeah, it's very cool. I like that. Yeah. Um, now, okay, do you have a personal favorite from the Burger Baron? What would well, you say? Well, I mean, the mushroom burger is what made us famous. Um, and I love that, but um, I have a couple of favorites. Probably that and the matzo burger. 
Oh, there's a mozzarella. Pretty good. Oh my gosh, that sounds good. Yeah, I mean the mushroom burger I have with cheese and pineapple. You're not ready for that yet. It's just, maybe just with cheese for now. Oh, pineapple. That's our that's our our, our famous one. Okay, so this is it. I I like pineapple on most things. I like oh, okay on my pizza. People yeah, me too. Me, but I love it. Um, so I would probably like it on a burger too. I I can see myself. Trying it's really it. good. Yeah, yeah. See, I've never tried it, so I have to try one now. Yes, definitely. Do you have any locations in Ontario, or is it purely out? You know, and oddly enough, there were 135 locations at one point across Canada and the U.S. Wow. Um, I believe there were two in Montreal, um, perhaps a couple in Ontario. Um, but we've since uh, reduced to about 35 locations, uh, mostly Western Canada and a few in the States. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, and it's only because not for lack of uh, good food or um, anything else, but more for um, the new generation just doesn't want to take over, basically. Oh. Right. So it's and there's no we don't really have a system uh, per se. So, right. which is a whole nother story. So maybe maybe I'm gonna have to get you to like FedEx me one or something. Yeah. Or something. Well, you know it's. Uh, <laughs> I, I have customers that have, uh, like, we have a guy, we have one location that's by the airport in Edmonton, mm-hmm. and he's a diehard customer, and he moved to Texas, so every once in a while, he'll come visit his daughter, who still lives here, and uh, he'll take back a, two jars of sauce, like, with him, so. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I can see that you've got some diehard fans. And so I can see how that would happen. And uh, he probably really appreciates that too. Um, well, yeah. hopefully, I'll, hopefully I'll make my way out that way and try one. But if not, for sure, you're going to have to send me one in the mail or something. <laughs> you'll be, you'll be uh, swearing at me because you'll be addicted to the burgers and then you'll have to fly out here every week. I but know. We, we even, you know, even diehard it. fans like Donovan Workin, a uh, local comedian who I grew up watching on TV, um he was in the movie as a matter of fact as well as the documentary um as a matter of fact my younger brother uh who sold his location a couple of years ago it made the news because uh donovan bought one of the signs that was on the restaurant and put it on his home uh and that made you know that was on the global news so it was pretty uh it was pretty funny but yeah he's he's a diehard fan for sure I, I have customers that even have burger burn tattoos on his home. Yeah, I put LED lights on it, and he, oh yeah, he's just, just That's uh, awesome. That's all the cool. way. Gonna love that. Yeah, yeah. That, that's great. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, what I was gonna say is, uh, from from mm-hmm. watching a bit of the, I know you had a series that was on CBC, right? Uh, CBC Gem. You had. A yeah, it was more of a. It was actually a documentary that they did a couple of years ago. We we had a producer approach us um, um, to do a documentary. And um, he, Omar Malam, he's uh, just a genius. He just um, did such a good job on the documentary and then the movie. Um, but even before that, he did a an article in the Calgary Herald called Would the Real Burger Brand Please Stand Up? Uh, it was very, uh, very well written, not unlike his documentary movie. And um, he's been working on the Burger Baron kind of saga for years. Um, and if it wasn't for him, you know, it wouldn't have seen the light of day. But uh, now that the movie is, is he's doing some special uh, pre-screenings, probably about a dozen now all around, even in... in Netherlands played a few days ago. Um, uh, my kids and I flew out to Toronto a few months ago for the world premiere uh, and 500 man theater packed house. There was people waiting outside that didn't make it in. And I was really surprised to see all that. Um, we'll end up on Netflix as well. And they're even talking about a, a reality show. Um, they're trying to get that going. So that's amazing. Yeah. I wish I had known you at that time because I would have tried to come down and take and get and get a like sneak peek of it. Oh yeah, it would have been great. Yeah, we. Yeah. But uh, well, that's good. I'm glad to hear that things are are rolling in a really good positive direction for this. Right. 
you know, that's amazing. Um, okay, well, I kind of touched on a little bit about the series. So maybe you could just tell everybody where they could see the original series that came out on CBC. Um, okay. Like what, what season is it? Do you, do you know the season? You know what? It's not a, a series. It's He did a 44-minute documentary. Um, oh, okay. And they played that on CBC a few times. Um, it's now available on the app, the CBC Gem app, G mm. G M, um, and it's called The Last Baron. Um, I wasn't in that one because I was off gallivanting in, in Banff. I missed both my interviews, but uh, my father, you know, and uh, family, and we're all pretty much in there. And uh, then about a year and a half later, um, he there was so much you know interest in the in the documentary that uh, they decided to go ahead with the movie. Uh, and the movie is called The Lebanese Burger Mafia, and it's almost a two-hour uh, uh, movie. So it's and it's really well done. Yeah, yeah I'm very excited. Well, I know that you had the premiere in, in Toronto, which is awesome. Yeah. Um, where where else can we find it? Where can we see it? Is it out for the public to see yet? Or The movie is not um, out until November, and oh. it'll be in, in theaters in November. Oh. Um, and again, the producer is uh, doing kind of scattered showings before that just to gain uh, more publicity, perhaps. But... Um, for now, it's just playing in, in select theaters until it actually comes out in November. Amazing. That's Officially. That's not too far away. I mean, that's like what? It's not. Know. Yeah, it's pretty close. Yeah, yeah we're well, excited. You, ha you have to definitely let me know when that's happening. I would love to be a part of it somehow, get in there, get to see it if I could, or yeah, or it for you, perhaps. Yeah, for sure. We, you yeah. have an open invitation. Awesome. That would be great. Oh. That's going to make me want burgers, though, for sure. Yeah. I, when I watched your ori the original one on Gem, I was I was like, that mushroom burger, that looks really yummy. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, okay, yeah. Well, the logo is really interesting, too. Um, how did that logo come about? You know, it's funny. We didn't invent the logo. Um, it was invented through Jack McDonald who, uh, from what I heard, was he was just approached by uh, someone to make a logo for him because there was no logo. There was just the, the wording. And he said, sure, why not? And uh, whoever he hired to do it is the one that invented it. So they, and they just went along with it. Um, there have been so many versions of that logo since. Uh, and it's funny. And, and they touch on this quite often, quite a bit on the, in the documentary and the movie, but, um, there's so many versions of it now because, you know, when our family took over and it's just kind of everybody did their own thing, uh, right down to having the slightly different recipes and so forth. So it's pretty interesting. Yeah. I mean, when I saw the logo, I thought it was really original and cool. I like the logo. That is cool. I, I really it is. It, it's become a, I mean, as I said, people are getting tattoos of that logo on their body. So it's, uh. It's it's pretty it's getting pretty crazy. Yeah, it's got to be a good logo. If people are getting tattoos of it. I guess that's cool. Um, okay, well, we've talked about the mushroom burger, of course. And can you share any of the recipe with us, or is it like is it top secret? You know what? <laughs> <laughs> the burger muffin might get me if I shared it. But <laughs> I was gonna say, either I way, you know they they um, they crowdfunded for the movie. Mm -hmm. um, and it was a relatively big, uh, you know, production. But, uh, I mean, they were flying all over the world, uh, you know, interviewing even my father. They interviewed my father overseas uh, in Lebanon as well as when he was here. But um, they, they actually have the sauce at the end of the movie, the recipe for the mushroom sauce. Oh. Because he's the producer said, if we hit our goal, I will release the, the recipe. Because the producer actually... Ironically, his parents owned a burger baron uh, in the 80s. Oh. And um, so that's, I think, where all the curiosity came about, right? Because 
from his words, he thought they were the only burger brand and his dad invented it when he was younger. So once he realized that that wasn't the case, I think that just sparked um, such an interest. Uh, and of course, you know, we have all this now, so it's, uh, it's pretty good. Ooh, that's cool. So you get to, you get to get to the goods at the end. Like, okay. Yeah. That's going to be, I'm going to be anticipating that. That's for sure to see those. Yeah. Those ingredients. Um, now when, when was the mushroom burger first introduced? Was it something that you did from the beginning or, or hmm. did that come in later? You know, I believe Valentine's day, 19, 19- 57 if i'm not mistaken um the mcdonald family family uh did a two for one uh sp- special on the introductory mushroom burger back then um uh, it may have been 63 because um i remember my father telling me about uh having lineups a few blocks you know long where to a point where the the police had to um, you know, direct traffic. And uh, so it's, it's very early on, they, they introduced the mushroom burger and that's what kind of uh, really made them famous. Wow. And you said it was on Valentine's day. So yeah. Maybe, like there's a couple in there and they're like biting the same mushroom. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, a whole yeah. Scene. You know, it's instead of, instead of the pasta, it's a mushroom, you know? <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. Wow. That's a great, I mean, that it's, very popular, obviously, if there's like people lining up down the street. That's cool. That's very cool. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, what would you say? I know you probably have a lot of amazing stories, but what would you say is one of your favorite moments that you can remember um, being a part of the Burger Baron business? Yeah. What would you say? Like um, one of the, the fondest memories. Hmm. Yeah. Probably um, just the fact that we worked with family and, and there was so many good times that came out of that. You know, it was my parents and my brother and sister. I'm the oldest. Um, and I mean, we got on each other's nerves, but there was also really good, uh, almost magical times that came out of it. You know, especially with the, when you put the customers in the mix, because our customers ultimately be, become friends. You know, a lot of them, I don't even know their names. I'll just say, hey, you know, there's that's Mushroom Burger, you know. <laughs> I just yeah. know them by their order, for example. But um, it was a special time. You know, I don't think uh, there'll ever be a time like that again. You know, I mean, I'm 51 now, but, you know, when, geez, we've been in that restaurant since we were eight years old. You know, a lot of memories. How many? Well, you, you described how many Burger Barons there are, right? How many did you say yeah. there were? There's about 35 left, uh, mostly Alberta, and maybe a dozen in the States Very or cool. a bit less. Yeah. That's they even cool. got to a couple locations in Lebanon, but um, even those ones, I think uh, there may be only one left over there. Wow. Wow. Yeah, yeah that's really cool. <clears throat> That's still quite a lot. I mean, I know from the beginning you said there were there were quite a few more too. So that's, I mean. About 135. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you know what? We had the potential to be the next McDonald's, or at least the Canadian McDonald's. Um, but you know, it's unfortunate. Like we, you know, Lebanese people don't really do well with uh, franchises. Unfortunately, we we're we're too. I feel uh, far too independent for that, and it was our ultimately our downfall. You know. Well, I mean, it is neat to see that everybody has sort of their own way of doing it, which makes it interesting, I think. Yeah. Right? Uh, of course, yeah. Forward. Those pros and cons, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so in terms of the burger brand, so I'm assuming since they are all different, they must have different owners, right? Do they have different owners? Is that? Yeah, different owners. Um it's mostly our, our family and, and uh, very close friends of the family. Mm. Um, and, you know, a couple of, of us own a, a couple, three, you know, um, but typically it's separate owners for the most part. Very cool. Very and cool. The, uh, the different recipes. Because what happens is, like, even I remember my cousin hiring a food 
um, you know, expert. And each person made uh, their version of the of the, the red sauce, for example. And we did a taste test, and and we were supposed to pick the best one and just all use the same sauce and be consistent. But right. that even that didn't work out. It just you know. Yeah. It, they chose hard. they chose the winner, and then they were like, "No, we don't like this sauce. Let's just went back to their own sauce." <laughs> I'm just like, nah. So, it's yeah. 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 Must be loving this thing. <laughs> That's cute. It's cool in a way, though, too, though. I I, yeah. I like that. I would probably go to all of them. I try one from each location. That's what I would do. I go. Well, and do the whole thing. it's funny you say that because Donovan Workham did just that. He literally uh, went to every location in Alberta and ate there, um, took a picture in front of, you know, each location. And uh, he posted it, I believe, on his uh, social media. But it's. it's uh, yeah, we have some real super fans, and, and it's very flattering uh, to a point where we even attract super fans that, you know, like there's, you'll see it in the movie, but um, we have a a parody, a Twitter parody Burger Baron account that we don't know who he is. Um, really edgy, and thank God he loves Burger Baron because this guy, you know, he's, uh, like I said, really edgy. He just, you know, doesn't back down and he he's uh it's sports oriented but it's all about burger brand and he's pretty uh it's pretty funny the um the bit of interview he gave you know uh in the movie and honestly of course it's just reading off of a page but it's uh and then the way the producer did it uh omar he just again just really really genius way of, of producing this movie it, it looks like a far more expensive production than we actually spent on, or they actually spent on it rather. Uh, so he did very well. Very impressed. Very cool. Yeah. It's making yeah. me want to do like an episode of talk with Shauna at all the different locations. Be like, now I'm eating the mushroom. Sure. Burger. Like, yeah. You might gain a few pounds <laughs> if you eat at each one, but it'll be worth it. And then I'll just use that. I'll use that gym pass to its fullest afterwards, I guess. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, you were saying that the company ran into a few problems. I'm assuming that everyone sort of wanted to go with their own thing was the main issue there. Well, or? the main issue early on when Jack McDonnell uh, started within his first six or seven locations, as I said, they expanded too fast, but the problem was they, they didn't train their uh, new locations properly and, and not for long enough. And, you know, back then the standard was 60 seconds per car. Because if you have six cars in the drive through the guy on the end's waiting six minutes, right? And um, longer than that isn't fast food anymore. And ironically, nowadays, like I know the our location in Leduc, um, which my father built in 1971, we called that one number 15. So even in 71, there was 15 of them ready. But that one now currently is, um, it takes, you know, eight ten minutes for an order sometimes but we we do it from scratch and made to order right so it's uh it's a big difference from the cut and paste fast food you see at mcdonald's for example you know even the way we do it you know we we, we cook the meat patty on the grill um and once that you flip it we start right away putting sauce and everything on the cooked side while the other side is cooking so it all heats up together makes a huge difference in, in flavor right so um so yeah it's you know you, you wait a little longer but it's worth it from what i see in the uh, uh reviews we get so yeah i've never seen that before so i them putting on the the content yeah. something like that, that yeah it's a huge really, difference i would assume that would make a big difference yeah i know dairy queen made an attempt in the 80s or 90s if you remember the hot side and cool side they had their their special packaging where it keeps the hot side hot, the cold side cold. So they, they oh, attempted wow. it, but it, it wasn't even the same, you know, they, and they couldn't, uh, it wasn't duplicatable at such a, um, yeah, a high volume. Right. So, which Definitely. is the problem. Definitely. Yeah. It just seems like way more authentic, you know, your, the, 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 the burger baron, like it just, when you, when you hear burger baron, 
it's got a different feel than say Dairy Queen. Like Dairy Queen, you just think yeah, whatever. Like, yeah, even the name. Yeah. yeah, even the name is different. Like it's it's uh, it's a great name because you know anytime you think of business, it's all about the name. You could have a you could have a, a million dollar building and have a a not so good name, and, and you may not do well, but you have a good name. Even if the building is a hole in the wall, you'll you'll do really good. You know, definitely, so, it stands out. Like it's definitely yeah. stands apart from the rest. That's for sure. Yeah. Um. So you mentioned the Godfather, which I think is so mm -hmm. awesome. Um. How how did that nickname come about? I mean, I, I, I'm assuming there's there's a story behind this. Well, I tell you, a little bit. There is. Um, so my father Rudy, he um, he grew up very poor. Like he came from humble beginnings. Um, you know, he had quite a few siblings, seven siblings, and they they came to Canada by the uh, late fifties, and he was the first one. And when he made it, he worked hard, you know, and, and he made it. But uh, he always wore a suit, three-piece suit. And, you know, he came from the era of cigars and suits and from, you know, uh, Dean Martin and uh, Rat Pack and all that, you know. So he's he grew up in that era, so he was very fond of suits and cigars and red wine, apparently. But... Um, he always wore a suit, even in a fast food restaurant in the kitchen, wearing an expensive suit because he vowed that he would never, you know, uh, go back to wearing anything less, for example. So um, so I guess people just, he has that look to him. Um, so they started calling him the Godfather, I guess, you know. I love that. Yeah. Love that. He, he deserves yeah. to wear that. Look, look at what he accomplished. You know, that's like amazing. Yeah amazing story it definitely yeah. gives me hope that's for sure and i'm sure it gives hope to a lot of other people um that's a really really epic thing that he did yeah so, i mean know? it's a typical you know immigrant story uh when they make it big right and it's uh every immigrant's dream right so he was one of the lucky ones because there are people that have worked harder than him and didn't make it so he you know there's definitely some luck involved my great uncle uh, who's been here since 1905, had a, a small hotel in southern Saskatchewan, I think six or eight suites with a restaurant on the bottom. That was big back then for a hotel, but um, in 1905. And we always joke around. We said if my dad had managed the hotel instead of the restaurant, we'd own a bunch of hotels now instead of restaurants. But um, it's kind of funny how things go. Mm -hmm. Definitely. You know? I can totally picture him. He's like the Godfather, you know. Just yeah. the whole like, oh, there's. Picture it. Yeah. You know, he he doesn't really like his picture taken too often, but I I snuck one picture of him that's uh, uh, really, I mean, the epitome of of Godfather, and it's it's a really good pic. It's probably my favorite picture of him. But uh, anyone who goes to my Facebook, it's open. It's just under my name, Joel Kimberly, and um, they'll see the uh, the clip of the movie creator. It's pinned on the top of the wall there. So they're welcome to do that. But yeah, there's a picture of him too. So he's pretty, it's pretty cool. That's for sure. And he's, he's 88 years old. Like this, the guy looks like a million dollars. He looks like he's 60, you know. Amazing. Okay. I'm definitely checking that out. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, for sure. Maybe, maybe someday I can smoke a nice cigar with him or something. I mean, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. yeah maybe. Yeah, the nicest yeah. guy. You know, he looks like he called a hit 10 minutes ago, but he's the nicest guy you'll ever meet Gotta if, once it. you meet him. <laughs> cool. Very cool. Um, okay, well, obviously, we went through the pandemic, and it wasn't very fun. Um, right. But did, how did that affect the Burger Baron business? Did it, did it have a big effect on it? Oh, yeah. Um, we actually got much busier because we were allowed to stay open because we we're drive throughs um, So we actually got quite a bit busier. And then, um, you know, around the same time, the, the documentary came out. And uh, that just added fuel to the fire. So it, it did very well. Um, and I know now they're they're talking about new uh, lockdowns by December, I guess, for the variant. So it's going to make us pretty busy again. So yeah. it's, uh, you know, because when a restaurant's closed down and the, 
the dining room is closed down, the, the, there's only drive throughs left, right? So, yeah, okay, so that ended up being okay then, in, in your yeah, system, which is good, I guess, right? Absolutely, yeah, so there's one positive out of the whole situation, I guess, right? I was hoping that that was just a rumor and it wasn't true, but I have heard it, so yeah, I've, I've been hearing hopefully. things. Hopefully, it's you know, we can only hope for the best, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nick say on that, hopefully, um. Yeah. Okay, well, if you if you could change, I know that you're a big fan of the Big Baron, but if you, yeah, uh, the Burger Baron, but if you could change one thing about the Burger Baron, mm-hmm. what would you change and why? I know it's kind of a difficult question, but you know, it's this is a catch twenty two answer because mm-hmm. I've always said I wish we could be uniform, you know, mm-hmm. like the big guys, but mm-hmm. you know, thinking about it in. In more depth, it's uh, it's one of our uniqueness, you know, one of our unique points uh, because we're all slightly different, you know. Yeah. So mm-hmm. honestly, I don't know if I change anything, yeah. except for more. Lo- I wish we had more locations. Maybe that's all. I wish we had you know five ten thousand locations in Canada, like like in Ontario. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. I agree with you on that one. Just, just to have a location here in Ontario. That'd be great. Well, you guys have Krispy Kreme there, so that's uh, oh, we don't have that here. Yeah. <laughs> talk, talk about gym pass <laughs> meeting to be yeah. used right in there. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, I'm excited that everyone is tuning in and finding out more about this film, um, about the business and everything. And um, so you're saying that. The, the general public will be able to see it in November. You're saying it's coming out, right? Is that the plan? Right. It's uh, yeah. The plan is in November um, in, in, uh, in theaters. Yeah. So we're pretty excited. And could you just tell our viewers what the name of the film is again, just so that we can remind uh, them? Yeah. The film is called the Lebanese burger mafia. Amazing. Amazing. I always, I never get, I never get enough of that saying that it's just uh yeah, I think they won some kind of award for most original title or something. But he's the producer has been winning. Incidentally, the producer has been winning a lot of awards for this movie uh, and for the uh, documentary as well. But um, yeah, he's been uh, he's been doing very well with with uh, with all that. So he's That's pretty amazing. excited too. Yeah. yeah. Do you, um, what's the what is the director's name? Do you do you remember his name? Oh, or? Yeah, Omar Mualim. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Really good guy. I, I had the chance to <clears throat> meet him in uh, Toronto a few months ago. Um, a really nice guy. And uh, after the world premiere, uh, we all kind of went out and had uh, food and, and uh, probably 40, 50 of us kind of took over one of the local restaurants there, but um, really nice guy, really down to earth. Um, you know, He's he's a genius. I, you know, I I make a point of saying that, um, and I'm a I'm a movie buff, and and the production was just really amazing. Awesome! I'm excited. I'm looking forward to seeing it myself. Yeah, um, it's, it's really good. Yeah, everybody that's watching, check this film out when it comes out because it's going to be amazing. I I can just tell you, right now from hearing everything that you're talking about, mm-hmm. it's going to be great. Um, can you just tell our viewers where we can find you on social media? Um, yeah, um, Facebook, it's just Jamal Kamaldeen. Um, I have a, uh, you know, I have my finger in a few things. So I have a, a finance company called, uh, Better Call Jamal, <laughs> another, mm. <laughs> uh, you know, of course, after Better Call Saul. Um, yeah, and we finance, you know, anything with an engine. I, I even, we even do mortgages. We do, uh, commercial equipment up to $2 million, for example. So we, you know, we kind of a one-stop, uh, business slash personal financing. Um, and then, uh, so you'll find better call Jamal on Facebook. Uh, and the website is www.bettercalljamal.co. That's mm-hmm. the new dot com. It's just CO, but, uh, and I've recently fell into the uh, entertainment world, um, which is pretty exciting. I always seem to keep adding things to my plate, but uh, the the Gemini in me just can't help it. Yeah. Uh, you know, so so I fell into 
that entertainment industry, as I said, um, there is a, a fellow I heard singing um, who I met a year and a half before, Leo Martinez Project, amazing singer, if you ever get a chance to hear him. But he's, he has a, a song on iTunes. He has a new album coming out. Um, and the second I heard him, I asked him if I could be his manager. He's like, you know, not right now, but we'll talk. So a year and a half later, which was a few months ago, he said, yeah, let's, let's get together to do something. So um, I settled for a booking agent. So um, as long as I'm working with him on some level and um, looking forward to adding a few more artists. I have a, a couple other good ones and um, it's going really well so far. Amazing, amazing. And everybody watching, his contact information is there, the, the music booking agent. I have all that stuff going on the bottom yeah. there. So if anyone <clears throat> is interested in contacting you, they could do that. I'm very yeah, my cell phone's there too. Yeah. So they can call or text as well. Yeah. And I'm in, I'm happy <clears throat> that you're in that industry too, because that's something I'm into. So that that that's great. Glad to hear Right. That. Yeah. We're uh we should talk. <laughs> we're yes, definitely we're talking, which is great. Um I just want to say thank you again for coming on the show and telling me about your film and everything that you're doing with the business. My pleasure. And definitely be looking out for when the film comes out and hopefully be seeing it and hopefully trying that mushroom burger because I every time I see it, I just want to try it. Oh, um, yeah. It's, it's really addicting. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. really good. So thanks again for, for coming on the show, Jamal. Thank I really you. appreciate you. Uh, and I hope to have you on the show again. Maybe we can talk about when the, the film comes out, maybe do a show about that. Never know. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, That's you bet. Great. Yeah. yeah. Anytime. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you everybody for watching Talk with Shauna right here on the Fired Up Network Female Empowerment Movement. And before I go, I always like to say, let the music live through you. Thanks again, Jamal. Thank you. Have a great night. You too. Bye.